In this video, I'm going to write a C program that's going to reverse the words in a string. So first we'll make a string. I'll say car s is equal to this is the way. And what I want to do is reverse the words in the string. So take each one of these words and reverse it. So first we'll make a function. We'll say void reverse words car star s. And this function is going to do the reversing for us. And the function is going to accept a string as an argument. So we'll provide a definition of the function down here before we call it. And because I'm working with strings, I'm going to include the string.h library because the string.h library includes all kinds of helpful functions for working with strings, including a function called strlen, string length, that's going to return the length of a string. We're going to want to use that function. And the way that I'm going to solve this problem of reversing the words in a string is I'm going to have an outer loop that's going to have a counter variable that's going to be responsible for keeping track of whether we've reached the end of the string or not. So the outer loop is focused on whether we've reached the end of the string or not. Then we're going to have two inner loops. The first inner loop is going to identify the word. And it's going to identify the word by stopping when we reach the first space or the first period. That's when we're going to say we've reached the end of a word. And then the second inner loop is actually then going to store that word in a reversed order into this string at the same position as the original word. So let's go over that. First, I'm going to find the string length. I'll say int len is equal to strlens. That's going to give me the length of the string that we passed to this function. Then I'm going to need a couple counter variables. So I'll say int i is equal to zero, j is equal to zero. And these are going to be my counter variables. Now, because I want to identify the word here and then reverse it when I store it back into the string here, I'm going to use a temporary character array to store that word temporarily. So I'll say car temp 100. And this array is going to temporarily store the word that I want to reverse. And we say 100 here because really no word is longer than 100 characters that we're going to see, you know, in a common sentence. So this should be enough space. And then we'll make our outer loop. So we'll say here for i is equal to zero, i is less than the length of the string, i plus plus. And this string is, this, this loop here is basically keeping track of whether we've reached the end of the string or not. Now the inner loop is going to identify the word. The first inner loop is going to identify the word. And we're going to use j for this. So we're going to say for j is equal to zero, i is less than length, increment j, increment i, each time through the loop. And we're going to say that if s at i is equal to a space or s at i is equal to the period, at that point we reach the end of a word and we're going to break. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to store into temp the character that we're looking at currently in s. So what this inner loop is doing is it's using j to count the length of the word because we start j off at zero and we increment j each time. And we're still using i, the same counter variable from this outer loop here, to step through the string itself one character at a time. And so we're checking to see when does s at i, when does s at that index equal a space or a period? Because at that point, we know we've reached the end of a word. So at that point, we break and we're done. We've, we've identified the word at this point and we're done. But until then, we're going to keep storing the character that we're currently looking at in s with the i index into temp. So we're going to keep storing the character, you know, one at a time into that temp array. And then the next inner loop is going to be responsible for storing this word in temp back into S, but in a reversed order. So we'll say while J is greater than zero, because J is basically keeping track of the length of the word, right? We started J off at zero. We kept on incrementing it until we were done storing the word into temp, right? So J is basically keeping track of the length of the word. We're going to say J minus minus here. And then S at I minus J minus one is equal to temp at J. So the arrays are zero index. So we're actually going to decrement J by one because we wouldn't want to access temp at J if J is the length of the word. We want to access it at one index earlier because arrays are zero indexed. So we take one off of j first, and that's the first character in temp that we're going to access. And we're going to store it into s at position i minus however long the word was minus one to store it at the right index. Because we want to store like s here and i here, right? And we got to 
make that adjustment. So we've got to go from I, the index I that we've kind of incremented all along the way in this first loop here, minus the length of the word, minus one. And that'll give us the right index in S to store the reversed word. And because we're kind of storing from the back of the word on downward, that's why we're going to get that reversal, right? Because J, remember, is referring to basically the length of the word, right? So J is set to the length of the word. And so when we start storing the word from position J on downward, we're basically then storing the word back into the string here in reverse. So let's just print out the string before and after. So we'll say printf percent s slash n will output s. Then we'll say reverse words s and then we'll print it out after. We'll say printf percent s slash n s and we'll output the string after. Okay, we'll do a compilation here and we'll run it. And we get, this is the way originally, but then we get the reversed words. So this is a reversed this, reversed is, reversed the, and reversed way. And we've successfully reversed the words and a string in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.